Hello again. So let's just take a couple minutes here at the end to mention some of the things that can go wrong with joints. The first thing that I'll mention is called bursitis. So if you look at the word here, so we've already seen the bursi, and so bursi meaning the those little pillow-like fluid-filled discs, discs that help to uh, cushion our joints. Situs or itis always means infl uh, inflammation. So as we go through this course, you'll notice a number of itises as we go through. And so bursitis means inflammation of the bursa, and this can be caused by by some sort of injury that where you hit that joint and it causes those to become inflamed. We also have tendonitis. So notice again the itis. So this is of inflammation of the tendon sheaths. This can also occur, and then. The one that is most widespread and causes all all types of problems throughout the United States and throughout the world is arthritis. So arth meaning the joint, and then itis meaning inflammation. So this is actual inflammation of the joint. There's a lot of different types of arthritis. It can be caused by bacterial infection, and and that can be uh, treated with antibiotics or something like that. And so, if it's caused by bacteria, that's something that you can treat. But also, there are other things that can cause arthritis, and we call these uh, chronic arthritis. There's a few different few different types. We have osteoarthritis. Notice osteo means bone. So this is the inflammation of the the bone the bone joint. And this is probably the most common, and this is something that just happens as you age. So as you age, these some of that uh, fluid may not cushion as well, the cartilage may have some wear and tear. So just as you age, it's just kind of the breakdown of things. And so it, it can cause pain, but usually this can be helped with anti-inflammatory drugs or just movement. The second type of arth arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis. And this one is actually an autoimmune disease, meaning that auto meaning self and immune, talking about your immune system, or in other words, your immune system is attacking your own body. And in this case, the, auto, the immune system is attacking the joints. And so what happens is, is the synovial membranes become enlarged, but then they become inflamed. You start to get an excess of synovial fluid building up in these joints. And then your immune system, which we'll talk about later in this class, white blood cells come in and start re releasing these inflammatory chemicals. And that's and then that becomes this arthritis. Over time, the synovial membrane is going to change, and and uh, it's going to the articular cartilage is going to start breaking down. And you're going to end up with scar tissue, and the scar tissue can eventually ossify or or become bone, and it's going to fuse those joints together. And so, in the extreme cases here, when this progresses really far. This is going to end up with bone deformities. It's going to end up with lack of movement. It's going to be a very crippling disease overall. Fingers or your wrist joints start to become inflamed, and that's often where it begins. It's going to be on both sides. It happens at the same time. And so this can be a very a crippling, very uh, uh, sad disease to have to deal with and they're not really sure what causes it or what triggers it necessarily but it is more common in men than than in women and it usually happens in in people that are middle aged to to older and there are a number of drugs that they have to to help keep the the inflammation down and then also just again in all these kind of joint type problems that happen movement itself trying to keep those joints mobile is a good way to help and counter the effects of these diseases. Last of all, there's something called gouty arthritis or just gout. So you may may have heard of this before. And this one is is more common in men than in women and may start around the age of 30 and go up from there. But this is an inflammation of the joints that's caused by uric acid. So uric acid comes from the breakdown of nucleic acids. 
So this is a normal process that happens in your body. So as nucleic acids are broken down, you end up with this uric acid. And usually your body secretes that uric acid and gets rid of, gets rid of it. But in this case, in the case of gout, this uric acid is being deposited in the joints, and you're ending up with these little crystals forming in the joints. And that's where the, the, the pain comes in associated with gout. So this can be very painful. Again, if it's treated, then then it's usually okay, and there's a number of uh, drugs that will help to uh, treat this. But if it's left untreated, it not only is it painful, but it can lead to problems with uh, joint joint fusing, the joints fusing together, and and not being able to move your joints, and and again a lot of pain associated with gout. So it, it is maybe partly hereditary, so it's, it's passed on in families. So if you have a, a history of gout, you may also, in your family, you may be susceptible to gout. And then also your diet as well. So there's foods that are high in nucleic acids that you can um, avoid to, to, help from, to help keep from getting this condition here. So those are some problems associated with the skeletal system. I want to talk a little bit about development of the skeletal system because it's pretty interesting. And we've talked a little bit about it as as a fetus, as a as you're growing in your mother's womb, your your skeletal system is first built of hyaline cartilage, and then the bones are are slowly the bone slowly replaces that cartilage. And at birth, the bones of the skull are still incomplete, and this is where we get the th what you may have heard of called the, the soft spot in a baby's skull. And this is called, the technical term for that is a fontanelle. That is the, that is the name for a soft spot. And so this is where the, the skull bones have not yet come together and fused together. So you, ended up, you end up with this, this area that's open. And this is actually important to have because as the baby is moving through the birth canal, this allows for some some movement of the skull bones to allow it to get through so the head is the largest part of the the baby that's that's being born and so it allows to allows it to move through the birth canal uh, which is good and then once the baby is born this is slowly going to be replaced over time until eventually you're going to have the the fused skull bones and the soft spots are going to be gone also, as a child, you have the epiphyseal plates still intact. The growth plates are still there, and there. And as the child is growing, once you get into teenage years or into the uh, the uh, early early twenties, those epiphyseal plates are going to be fusing and becoming being replaced by bone. So that hyaline cartilage is going to be gone, and growth is going to uh, lengthening of bones is going to end at that time. Then you'll just have bone remodeling throughout the rest of your life. Another interesting thing to think about is the the relationship of the body. So as I just mentioned, in a baby the, the head is the largest part of the baby. So proportionally as an infant your your head is very large. And so there's a lot of development that goes on it goes on with the brain in the womb as as the baby is growing. And so as you age, that proportionate proportion of your body is going to change. So by the time you become an adult, your head is not going to be such a large proportion of your body. And there's a, a nice little diagram in your book that I like because it shows this proportion. And, and what this diagram is not showing is it's not showing that the baby to the adult are the same size. What, what it's showing is the proportion of the different body, body parts in these different individuals. So as a baby, notice how your head takes up almost a fourth of your body and the rest of your body is, is the rest of three-fourths. But as you age, by the time you become an adult, your head takes up much less of your body as your long bones have, your legs have, have lengthened, your arms have lengthened, the rest of your body is lengthened. And so proportionally, your head is now a, a smaller part of your body. And this is kind of an interesting thing as, as humans with large brains, we have a lot of brain development, and so um, our our head is such a large part of our body when we're born. There's also a few problems that are associated with the structure of the vertebral column as well, the curvature of the spine. So when you so we have an, our spine. So in order to stand up stand upright, we have an S shaped S-shaped spine. We have these curvatures, natural curvatures in our spine that allow us to stand upright. But there are some things that can, that can happen. One in particular is called scoliosis. And 
that's not the right slide. One is called scoliosis, and this is where you have a abnormal curvature of the spine, so it's moving either to the away from that midline, so it's laterally moving either left or right in the body. That's called scoliosis, and this this happens uh, in a lot of different a lot of different people. People maybe that grow have a have a fast growth spurt may often develop scoliosis. And then there's also kyphosis and lordo uh, lordosis, which are also abnormal curvatures of the spine. And what you see here, this being this light colored area here is the normal curvature that you expect in the spine and here, but you see that it's uh, either pushed out in, this, in the case of kyphosis, which would look like somewhat of a, a hunchback here. And, and then we also have lordosis, where you have the, the inner curvature of the spine is curved in too sharply. And so these are some, some problems that are associated with the spine curvature. And then there's also something called osteoporosis, which we're all familiar with and we hear a lot about. And this is bone thinning over, over time. And this is also more common in women than in men. And so what happens is that as, as you age, your bones are going to become they're going to start breaking down, you're going to lose some of that calcium, and you're going, to, you're going to end up with these larger spaces in your bones and make them more fragile and more easy, easy to break. And this is why we see in uh, older people, when they fall, they have a very good chance of breaking a bone, especially a hip bone or a leg bone or something like that. A young person can fall, and, and if, you know, if it's bad enough, they may have a break, but it's much more common in, a, in an, an older adult, and so this osteoporosis can be very dangerous for them. This is a picture showing a normal bone and an, a bone that has osteoporosis, and can you tell which one is which? So this bone over here on the right is a normal bone. So notice how it's thick, you have these spaces here. Over here we have a bone that is beginning in the beginning stages of osteoporosis, and this may continue, but notice how the bone is breaking down, you're ending up with these large spaces here, and then you also have these spaces coming as the bone is breaking down over time. All right, so that's where we're going to end our discussion on the skeletal system. Thank you.